Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker and I have as my guest today Pastor Alex Montgomery. Pastor Alex is the pastor of Grace Covenant Worship Center in Hogansville. And I just want to say that if you don't have a church, we would love to have you at Grace Covenant Worship Center. That's where I attend and it is a wonderful church with a, a great family atmosphere where mm -hmm. you will learn who you are in Christ. Amen. And we're going to talk about prayer today, aren't we, Pastor Alex? Indeed. And I thought, Wanda, we'd focus in a little bit today on the prayer of faith and even more explicitly about the power that we have in prayer. You know, Sunday before last was uh, Pentecost. We always celebrate Easter and Christmas. Yes. But I like to talk about the power of Pentecost. Yes, me too. Because we have, Wanda, such a legacy of power that has been given to us, not because we could earn it, not because we struggle to get it, not because it's just for the great men and women of God or the ones that have really prevailed for a long period of time. It is for every single person who's willing to say, I'll receive it. Yes, because when we have Christ inside of us, we're all great men and women of God, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When you think of the promises, there's so many of them. We could stay here all day just quoting promises. But right from Acts 1-8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So every person that's allowed Christ in their life and they've received the Holy Spirit has that power. Yes. Think of the last words before Jesus went into heaven. He said a tremendous word right there in Matthew 28. All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always till the end of the world. So he wouldn't have said, all power is given to me, now go ye. Therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? Uh -huh. We have that same power. Isn't that great? Oh, it's incredible. We, yes. I mean, we, we have that. How, how about this from Luke? Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So see, I have the power to stand protected. I have the power as a witness. Yes. I have the power to live a godly life because one of you and I know this, and we teach this all the time, no one's ever kept the Christian life. No one can do it. Only one person has ever lived the Christian life, yes. and that is Christ. Now, by faith, I live through the life of another. I don't live my own life anymore. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So if I have His faith, why can't I then release His power and not relegate that to something I need to ask Him for, but rather to pray from the fact that I already have it? And even the gospel, Wanda, when you think about Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. Even the gospel itself, I always say this, the same power that was in the event, if we're talking about the death, burial, resurrection, the ascension of Christ, the power that's in the event, number one, I was in him when he transacted that event. When he died, Romans 6 chapter, I didn't just observe him, I died with him. Yes. So how dead am I? to sins, to temptation, to worry, to frustration, to anxiety. I'm just as dead as he was, fully dead, yes. because I was in him. When he rose, I was in him. So now I am seated in heavenly places, because we knew seated I was. So all this wonderful identity teaching in him, well, the same thing. When he rose up, uh, Romans 8, 11, if you then be raised with Christ Jesus, you're quickened with Him. Yes. Because I was in Him when He was quickened, I was quickened. So Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you has He quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. I have been quickened. I've been made alive. Here's the question, Wanda. I need to believe that and by faith and through prayer, appropriate that yes. for my life yes. on a daily basis. So on Resurrection Sunday, when we are celebrating the resurrection of Christ, 
we are really celebrating the resurrection of us too, right? That's good, that's good, yes. yeah. Yeah, that, that brings the new light for me. Well, it does, yeah, because it says, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And <clears throat> when you were raised up, just a few verses after that in Ephesians, Ephesians 2, I think what, seventh verse or so, it says, and we were raised up together. Right. What a word of yeah. power. Yeah. I was raised together with him. I was seated together with him. We are seated together with him in heavenly places. So the place of power is not, oh, I got to get that power. Oh, I got to press in. No, the place of power is like you and I right now, seated. Yes. Because his power was already released. It's already there. It's already given to us. So now our position is not one of struggle. Oh, I've got to get that power. Oh, I never have power. Oh, whenever I pray, nothing changes. That's not the right confession to have. Because if I'm seated with him, if I've been raised with him, the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Yes. So if that is true, and also think of this, Wanda. I am a son of God. You're a daughter of God. It says over there in John 1, 12, as many as received them, to them gave he the power. power to become sons of God. So since we're in the family, we have the power of the dad. Yes. Is now yeah, ours. that's right. And, and so we can carry that, Wanda, down to a real practical basis. One of the places I love, which I got my Bible here in front of me, is from uh, the first chapter of Ephesians. Because Paul had two prayers in Ephesians, chapter 1, chapter 3. His one in chapter 1 was to tell us that we need to be enlightened about what we have as children of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. He says that your eyes of your understanding be enlightened. He didn't say pray that you get it. He's saying now be enlightened that you have already gotten it. Yes. So he says, here's his prayer, that you would know what the riches of the glory of our inheritance is in the saints. All of us, not the ones that pray more, the ones that do better, the ones that behave right, all the saints. Then he says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? power. Uh, and here's, here is the uh, condition to us who believe. Yes. That's it. Yes. And then he gives us five kinds of power in one verse. I always call verse 19 of Ephesians 1 as the most powerful verse in all of the uh, epistles, and it is because it's talking about the power. It says the exceeding greatness of his power. That's dunamis. We always talk about that dynamite power. Actually, as a noun, it means more of an inherent power. In other words, it can be released whenever I choose to. Yes. That's what Jesus said. All power in heaven and earth is mine. Go ye therefore. You take my power. It's your responsibility. I'm giving it to you. You take it. So dunamis would be that inherent power. Then the next word it says towards us who believe according to the working. The word working there is energeia or energy. I don't know about you, Wanda, I can have some times where I need extra energy. I need extra strength, particularly at the age that I am now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know what? I'm not saying there's not days we're going to be tired, our body gets tired. But sometimes I need energy of thought. I need energy in praying for people. I need energy in believing. I need to let that power of God be something that does physically, emotionally, energize me. Yes. We've got the promise of that. Right. Woo. And so then, we then, have yeah. it. We just have to realize that, right? Yeah, that's what Paul was saying. We have to have it. Well, we do have it if we're born again. We must realize it, but then he goes on to say, now we have to have the faith to utilize it. Yes. See, I could say, Wanda, today, okay, I know I have a rich dad. Okay, great. He's left me a will and testament that says it's all yours. So the power and the clout and the riches that I had are now yours. You know, it would be good to know that that was my dad, number one. Number two, that he had left me a will. Mm -hmm. But until I would go and execute that will as my own, what good would it do? That's where James said, faith without works or corresponding actions is dead. Yes. Until I take that which I have and act on it. So I would say, okay, it says here that I have the inner Gaia. Uh, I have dunamis released. So when I start to pray for the power of God in any area of my life, how about the power to be patient? Yes. How about the power of long suffering? 
you see, I mean, the practical things, not just power for miracles. Thank God for that. We all need miracles. Uh, the power to see things changed in my life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, whatever that may be. But <coughs> I have to appropriate my faith in that power. The little woman with the issue of blood, she declared that if she touched the hem of his garment, she'd be healed. She knew <coughs> there was power in him. Yes. She knew where there was power because the hem of that garment was his talit. And uh, that was all the 613 laws. Well, somewhere she knew that he was the fulfillment of that law. It wasn't anymore keeping a law. He was the fulfillment. So when I touch him, yes. then I shall release power. Now, here's the point. She declared it before she had it. And she didn't even have what, even we're near what we have now, the resurrection powers being ours, sons and daughters of God. We can tread on serpents and scorpions. She had a prophetic vision, and she declared it was hers. Yes. This, yeah. Yeah. So our actually believing it enough to speak it is very yes. important. Oh, absolutely. And with that speaking, it's like that's how God... Um, brought things into existence. Mm -hmm. And so we are his children and we have that same power. Yes. So when we speak things, it creates. Absolutely. And one, you know, I know a lot of people feel like that gets creepy and that gets weird and you can boss things around. Of course not. Jesus said, I only say what the Father says. I only do what I see him yes. do. It's not a matter of using this for selfish intention. It's not me trying to be Darth Vader. It's not me trying to stand in a place of commanding God. Mm -hmm. It's just if he speaks it, then I also can speak it. Confession, homo logio, homo the same, logio the word, saying the same word as. Yes. Why can't I say what he has promised me even before I receive it? This morning I said, Wanda, that today, because I knew I'd have a lot of full things on my schedule today, I will walk in the peace of God. Yes. Now, is that cocky, conceited? No. Did I have to pray, oh, God, give me peace today? No, I have a promise in Ephesians 2 that he has given me his peace. Yes. So now why don't I pray from the platform of what I already have in him? To me, that's a wonderful prayer. Yes, it is. And it, it also is a different approach in how you approach God. You know, instead of help me, Lord, mm -hmm. know that he's already helped us. Yes. He's already done everything. Mm -hmm. And so we just realize that, you know, he, he already has given us strength. So we say, thank you, Lord, that I'm going to walk in your strength today. Right. And it's really a new attitude for us, isn't it? What it is, and this, what you're just saying, is the message of grace. Grace is not saying, oh, go do whatever you want, sin, do whatever. No, it's not an allowance. Grace is an empowerment. Yes. When I realize today that you and I are empowered with the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, patience, I am already empowered with those things. Yes. Grace says they're given to me because the finished work was perfect. When he said, it is finished, he gave me everything. See, this is 2 Peter 1, 3, such another powerful power word. Yes. According as his divine power has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him, I've got to know this. Right. Why would we come to church? So that we begin to learn what is ours in Christ. Then we can appropriate it. We can pray from that. And it does want to, you're right, it sets me at peace. I'm at rest. Even if I don't see it immediately happening, I know that the love of Christ was shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5, 5. So thus, I now can say, I will walk in the love that is mine. And that's, that's Philippians 2. Work out your salvation. It's there. It's already given to me in my spirit. Now by faith, by prayer, yes. I begin to appropriate it into my body. I begin to say it. I begin to believe it's mine. And I act like the word is true. Yes. And you know, when we say things, our mind picks up on those th things that we say. And we begin to believe what we say. You got it. Yeah. So it's important even... If we think we're having to muster up faith, that we go ahead and say it, 
Yes. So that we hear it and our brain takes in and begins to act on those things. Yes, and, and we will act on them. If I sit here today and say, life is so rough, nothing works good for me, everybody's against me, I feel like such a failure. You begin to say that, your brain begins to pick that up. And I can't say those things. I could say, Wanda, I feel today very sad. I feel depressed. But God. Yes. <laughs> King David. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, I've cried on my bed all night long. My bed is wet with tears. But thy loving kindness is better than life. Oh, yes. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I'll lift up my hands unto thy name. You know, and it's okay to say that you're going through a hard time. Uh -huh. But why not come back and proclaim a promise that is greater than the problem? Yes. And to say what he says, because Wanda, he's the high priest of our confession. He is. He's the high priest of our confession, not confession of sins. See, even when I sin, I'm saying I agree with God that this is wrong. Confession means that. Yes. Even though my sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future, completely at the cross, I still will come back and repent. Yes. Not to get forgiven. I'm already forgiven. But to say, that's not who I am. That's right. I don't want to be offensive to you, Lord. I want to walk, here we go, in the righteousness that I already am. Yes. Why not act like who I am? I'm already the righteousness of God in Christ. It was a free gift. That's right. So my focus begins to be on what He has done. Now when I see what He has done, and I know He has given it to me as a free gift, I simply begin to walk in who I am. Wow. What a blessing. <laughs> and what a powerful human being on the earth, right? We are powerful. Yeah. We are powerful. I mean, going back here to what, what Paul said. Well, I was going to tell you, here's, here's another neat thing about strength. Listen to this. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, watch this, unto all patience and long suffering, and here's the key, with being joyful. Yes. Some people can have patience, but they just endure. I'll just put up with this marriage. I'll just put up with this job. You know what? There's not one person watching us today that has to put up with things anymore. I know things can be difficult. Oh, man, do I ever know it. But see, with His power, with His grace given to me as a free gift, I could work the most boring job on an assembly line. I could sit behind a computer screen all day, and even though it was tedious and difficult, I have the power to walk through it with joyfulness. Yes. Because, he says, we've been made partakers of this inheritance of the saints in light. And I've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into a new kingdom. Yes. The kingdom of his beloved son. What's that kingdom? You've already been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Take it. Walk in it. Proclaim it. Believe it's yours even when you don't feel it. Even when you don't feel joyful. Now, see, one at this point, people say, ah, oh, that's hypocritical. Well, what am I going to believe is reality? What this says that I already have in Christ or how I feel today? Again, not denying the feelings. We're not into Christian science. But we're saying here today that there's something greater than my feelings. I need to tell my feelings how they can act. Not let them just be under the whim of any circumstance, of my anxiety, of my fear, my worry, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and say, thank you, Lord, today. I'm strengthened with all might by your power, not mine. i got to work something up. Uh-uh. I just say, whoo, I have your power today. So, Lord, I know I'm going to face some trying situations. i got some difficult confrontations today. I have your patience. I have your long suffering. You ever been around a person who knows everything? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they have all the answers. And you sit there and talk to them and you feel more irritated and more agitated and more frustrated. And then all of a sudden you remember, I have the long suffering of Christ. I can go ahead and say, gee, thank you for that input. Mm -hmm. That is really great. And not be caustic and not be sarcastic, but go ahead and be around people that are hard to be around and be okay yes. because of the power of God. That's right. And, and also looking at them differently yes. and, and knowing that that God loves them and they're going through some things and, and maybe they 
they have to act like they know everything. You know, right. who knows? But, um, you know, when you look at people and, and look at them differently, look at them as a creation of the, of the Lord. Yes. And, and, you know, we just ask the Lord to give us eyes to see how He sees them mm -hmm. and help us to have the right attitude toward that person. That's right. Yes. Well, see, here's the good news. We have the power to do just that very thing. We do. That's why we're trying to take this thing power even right down to where we live. Uh, I can remember one when I first got saved. I met a guy that owned a dairy farm, and he had some sick cows. And so he said, hey, would some of you guys have just been saved? Come out with us. We're going to pray over our cattle. I went, what? <laughs> cows? What are you talking yeah. about? God didn't die for cows. He said, I know he didn't. He said, but you know what? They're my livelihood. Uh -huh. And I believe he started talking about the power of God. Yes. Listen, we went out there in the pasture and a couple of these poor old cows, milk cows, I know they're probably very expensive and brought him a lot of money in, were laid down on the field. They were dying of some type of thing. We went out there, there were six of us I can remember, and we laid hands on those cattle, those cows. I want to tell you what, Wanda, within a day, a day, they were back up on their feet and they were milking them within two days. Wow. Well, now, we, he believed, this guy yeah. simply believed, God, you have given me. It's not my power. That's I'm right. not, it's not how I pray. It's not if I prayed in King James English. It's not who I was just praying with. It's the fact that I believe that when I pray, I receive. He kept saying, I believe that I receive right now. And, I, and here's another thing that he did, too. It was so great. I had never heard this before from Zechariah 4. Remember I talked about it Sunday? Uh-huh where he says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And then he said, before Zerubbabel, well, he said, this mountain shall become a plain yes. before Zerubbabel, who was rebuilding the temple. And he said, and shouting to it, grace, grace to the mountain. And so this guy started saying, grace, grace to my cows. I speak grace over them, just like they did, just like Zerubbabel did. I speak grace to that. I'd never heard that before. Yes, and what does that, what does he mean when he says I speak grace to that? He was speaking the provision <laughs> of God. What's the provision we've talked about? His mighty power that Paul said, I pray you'll realize how much of you have for this. Obviously for people, but it can be for things as well. Yes. So the grace to me, Wanda, was the incredible, unbelievable, eternal provision for, again, Second Peter 1, all things that pertain to life. His cattle pertain to his life. Yes. And so he's saying this pertains to my life. So the grace is the provision. And then the power to me is like the ignition, the igniting. Yes. I say, Father, this is your power today. Ignite this situation for these cows. I'm believing they're going to stand back up. I need this income. I need this support. This is my business. I've blessed these animals. Yes. I'm believing they'll rise up. Now, if it's that true for an animal, how about for a human being? Where it says, by his stripes, we are healed. Just talking about healing is one yes. thing. And I know there's times we pray and we don't see anything change. But you know what? I'm not going to stop praying and believing for the power of God to be in evidence. Why? It's mine for the asking. That's right. And we, and we see people get healed and we see miracles. Absolutely. So, you know, we just do. We just obey. We just speak. Yes. And then we wait and see. But um, yes, we're not going to stop because it's so powerful. Even when we see people that are prayed for, and we know plenty of those, Wanda, and there's no condemnation. Because it's not about us. It's about Him. The focus is on His power. Yes. That's why this place of rest is so wonderful. I quit analyzing, do I deserve it? Am I good enough for it? Do I have enough faith? I have Christ's faith. It's just exactly what happened to Moses out in the, in the wilderness when they were bit by the snakes. He said, let's put this serpent, let's mm -hmm. make a serpent of bronze, of bronze on a pole, and let's look at it. And when you look at it, you shall be healed. It was a type of the cross. Yes. Because the cross is also so powerful. Even Paul said um, over here in, uh, in second, uh, 1 Corinthians, actually, listen to this. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us the cross is the power of God. Right. So going back to your question. The grace was the power of God, the provision of God already given to us through the finished work. And that guy's saying, now I appropriate it 
for myself, for my belongings, for my business through this cattle. Yes. Wow. Yes, and were you talking about holding up the, the snake on the pole? Yes, yes. Um, that reminds me of something that you had talked about earlier about where we keep our focus. Yes. And I, I know a lot of people focus on their sin and what they've done wrong mm -hmm. and trying not to do wrong. Mm -hmm. And what, what you have taught us and what God is trying to say to us is that that is not to be our focus. We're That's not right. to be sin focused, are we? That's right. We're to focus on God, and when we focus on God and who He has made us, Amen. righteous and holy and already cleansed of all of our sins, mm -hmm. then you know, even though something happens and we sin, we just know that that is covered right. by the blood and mm -hmm. that we get up from that place yes. and uh, know that we are in complete uh, approval of the Lord still mm -hmm. and that you know he's going to help us get through that situation that that has beset us at that time that's right but the focus is to be kept on God yes see see really want to write that point I know we'll close with this I have the power of his holiness yes see God's after our behavior he wants it he wants to he yes. wants us to repent but here's the thing, I no longer have to do it in self-effort. This is the glory of grace. Right. I now have, and this would be a great thing for us to talk the next yes. time, the power of His righteousness in me, the power of His holiness in me, the power yes. of His goodness is now mine. So by faith, I begin to live that out, another great part of the power of God. Yes. <laughs> and so um, I just want to say to you, that the Lord God has done an amazing work and Amen. made you a powerful person on Amen. earth so that you can make a difference. And I know that you will. Thank you for watching.